Hello everybody, it's uh, Frank Norris um, from the Frank and Stan chat and uh, it's good morning or good afternoon, Stan. Good afternoon again. <laughs> yeah, actually you won't realise everybody but we tried this this morning and the internet connection was so poor we had to abort it. It was the first time, I think this is, we were discussing before, I think this is the 19th of these. So the first time we've uh, had a problem on the internet in that time. So. Uh, Mid-afternoon, um, the final I'm calling it Monday. Yeah, the day before the new academic year. So uh, anyway, so um, it's great that you've all decided to come and join us again. Um, we're going to chat. I don't know what about. I think it'll be a, a little bit around what's happened in the last year and what's going to happen tomorrow and what have you. Um, as I say, we have some simple rules around no. Uh, slagging off, um, we try and be kind, and uh, we are aware of the fact that we we've never faced some of the challenges that some of the senior leaders and politicians are facing at the moment. But that doesn't stop us from highlighting errors when we think they've occurred, and uh, we we we're pleased to be able to do that. Uh, anyway, Stan, what have you been doing this week? Anything caught your eye this week? Um, yeah, I was uh, the the polarisation of people on on any kind of topic and, and the one that struck me this week was what are we going to do about exams and, mm -hmm. and immediately the conversation seemed to to split this was on the radio split between we can't have any you know we must carry on press on with exams they must be the same as they've always been to those sort of saying well maybe we need to look at, at ongoing assessment maybe we need to look at, at other ways we can mitigate if such a disaster happens again but it was two tribes straight away. No, no compromise, no understanding of what each other was saying. And I fear that most things are going along those lines now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I agree. I mean, it, it, in so many things, not just in education, but generally, um, oh. I think we've become quite polarised, haven't we? Um, and I think uh, the thing that caught my eye this week was the, uh, the death of Ken Robinson, um, who in himself was... You know, as somebody who I, I, I watched many times, read um, a number of books, but also I think when I spoke to colleagues about his work, it tended to polarise into those who thought it was a sort of liberal, soft left sort of stuff, and to those who thought it lacked rigour and was just a really nice sort of fairy tale of an idea as to how children sort of could have a better experience at school. Um, I'll leave it to those people watching to decide on which side I think you and I would have jumped. But uh, yeah, it was sad to see him pass away. I have a great regret over Ken Robinson that we nearly, very nearly managed to book him to come and do a, a day in, uh, in Lancashire. Um, but it fell down at the last minute after we'd booked the venues and everything because he or his company had made a decision not to come over to the UK at that point. Right, we were right. Very close to having him in. Um, in Lancashire. Yeah, yeah. Well, we ha we're, we're at a point, aren't we, where we're going to say goodbye to uh, the most traumatic of academic years, um, but we're now facing, I suppose, some polarisation again um, as we step into tomorrow. Um, what are your thoughts about the, uh, the challenges ahead for schools, teachers, parents as we step into a new academic year? I, I think the, the difficulty uh, will be in some cases where head teachers or, or school leaders or mat leaders make hard decisions too early. You know, like, you know, if you take the face mask, you know, there were already people saying there's no way we're ever going to wear face masks in school. There were other heads saying that will be part of the uniform from day one. And somewhere in between is, you know, if, you're, if you want to wear a face mask, you should be able to if you don't want to wear one that's up to you but i, I think yeah. there's that that compromise that that i think i would still have as a head that i think again people who who want to impose harsh rules from the start don't allow that flexibility and i, I don't know how you would deal with a parent who brings a child to school and says i want them to wear a face mask all day. Yeah. Um, there are two things from this the first was uh um, I would have thought if you're mitigating risk, the, the thing you would want to do is to try and set up a number of barriers that, that reduce the risk. Uh, face masks, I mean, the, the science behind it is a separate story, I think, but actually 
that must surely be one of the actions you would take. And as the as you became more confident, you could release some of those actions. Um, whereas it seems to be that the government set off by making it clear that we don't want any. You know, this is again the narrative about we're getting back to where we were before. Um, I, I think it, that just means that you're going to, if there was another spike, you're just going to escalate then the risk you know, or the mitigation plan to yeah. add to the risk. Yeah. Um, and it's I much agree. easier to ease off than it is to drive forward with it, you know, adding more and more pressure to, uh, to the situation. Yeah. It's one of those that I was shouting at the television in the early days where the scientists were saying, there's, there's no evidence to say that, that masks will make things any better or easier. And I was doing the usual show. Well, if there's no evidence, there's no problem in wearing them then. Yes. We're not talking about a step backwards or a step more dangerous. We're just talking about, is it a mitigation that's, that's an additional help or necessary? Yes. I, I, I do find it amusing when, you know, I've just nipped out to the shops and see everybody wearing a face mask, which I think right at the beginning, you were looked at as odd if you were wearing a face mask. Now it's what you do, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 uh, the other point I, I was going to sort of uh, um, make was around this sort of idea that uh, it, continually we get ourselves into a situation where leaders think they've got to be show complete control over a decision you know so I think that it's seen as weak if you if you're not absolutely definitive in what you're going to do and this is why I think politicians got themselves into the position of saying well we're not going to have face masks because it's absolutely clear we're not having face masks as opposed to a more sort of nuanced approach um, they're very keen to stress the fact that there's you know science behind all of this. Well, I haven't seen the scientists for a while, but actually, you know, that's what they say. You know, so I think mm. there's probably more that needs to be done here to sort of get the narrative right about you know um, where we're at. And, and the announcement on Friday with the updated information to schools, you know, it's Friday night. Yeah. I can't believe it. I mean, they've done it again. I mean, they are not listening, are they? They. they, they no, but also, Frank, it went out Friday night and then went off and then came back with a few changes because the first thing was out of date. Oh, gosh. Well, somebody, well, no one updated us as to what had changed from the original guidance. So everybody had to read the guidance again to work out what, what it yeah. was different. And it's again that, that, that element of um, lack of sensitivity, uh, a lack of uh, collaboration and bringing the profession into their arms to say you know they not everybody will agree with what's happening tomorrow in terms of face masks and social distancing but actually there's been a, a definite divide here you know the polarization that we have the government there who, who i don't know how or why they cannot feel they've got it in them to actually just embrace the profession more than they are um and, and you've got to you've got to embrace the trade unions you cannot you know, that they represent so many uh, members in the profession, you cannot then just say, well, we're going to ignore them, which are, it appears to me that the unions had no idea this guidance was coming out on Friday night, you know. No. Or, we'll, or we'll take it to the press that the unions are, are doing everything they can to stop schools reopening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that we can, again, we can search around and find someone to blame should it all go, go, go wrong. There, there was a shameful um, article in the Telegraph um, on I think it was uh, on Friday um, where it basically was promoting this idea um, that if face masks are worn then actually behavior you know, oh, yes. oh. you know would um, would be rampant you know and, and actually it then made me think I've never heard of this person who'd written it before so I dug out who that person was and um, it was somebody been an assistant uh, principal somewhere, um, but actually, when you look at the CV, you know this is a, somebody stood for um, a conservative uh, uh, post. He was, he's, I think, he's seeking an MP's position, uh, and actually, it did make me think. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that in itself is bad. You know, what I am saying though is that if you're, if you're going to read an article, um, it's probably important to know where, you know, where the 
origins of the article, yeah. what, what the author of the of the article is, what what they stand for, um, because that that article I thought was shameful and uh, got far too much coverage because it didn't represent the the views of many many people in the profession. You know, no, so it's, you know. The, the same's true, Frank. When we when you watch programs like Newsnight and where, where they have you know specialist people on, who are often from very odd yeah. groups with, with no suggestion or no explanation of who who funds them, how they run, how they're managed, and the, and they become the expert in things that you know that, that they're not necessarily got any expertise yeah. in. I think we understand the reasons why they're there because we know that they yeah. have the same view as the other person that they're there. But yeah. actually we don't know who they stand for, you know, who they represent, who funds them, you know. Um, and actually, you know, I think that this is something that I know in the States they've tried to be much clearer on that. Um, and I know that um, uh, the Republicans were very concerned about criticism that they were facing from Democrats who were sort of shadow Democrats so that they worked for an organization that was funded by a democratic group but actually they, that meant that they that, that individual did you know spoke on their behalf on their own view their own views but actually behind them there was a sort of body of support yeah so I, I think they would have think that to be much clearer without naming any organizations I think that's true now in education yeah. We have various groups that, that are at least contacted by the news, by the press, for their comments when they have no more right to make a, an expertise comment as anybody who's in, in the profession. Yeah, yeah. And suddenly, because they have a group name, it sounds as though it's, a, it's an organisation who are looking openly at, at the, the issue and not necessarily yes. with, with a particular slant i mean in a way it sort of um, puts us into some consideration about how well do you think it's going to you know sitting not sitting on the fence but what are your predictions for the new term do you think this is all going to work out really really well and everything will be fine with occasional spikes or do you think that that you know there is a good chance that this could all sort of start to crumble i i would love it to settle down rapidly and and be as close to a normal as we can get i really would and i think you know the, the fears over the vast majority of children are won't happen i think i think most children will settle back into the routine certainly at primary level there will be some that are traumatized and, and troubled by yeah. it but most will get back into the routine quickly but i can't help thinking that we're going to have school closures year group closures uh, local high school, if we have a, a bubble closure, it's 300, 300 yeah. students. So 300 students out for, for 10 days. Um, not clear, really, because I think the new guidance says that you have to consult with your local health as to who's had close contact and who's not. How is... I, I just love to know how a health official is going to make a decision over 300 students who's had close contact yeah. with who over the last four or five days. Yeah, I, 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 I fear that that will happen. I mean, we've seen some in Scotland, haven't we, where there's been outbreaks. I hope it can be managed as locally as a school or a bubble or a, a group of, of students. Um, but then I, I'm worried as much about the staff because I, I know I was reading something where a member of staff was saying, but I teach across all the bubbles. Yes. Or, or um, in one school, it's not a school I know, it was like it was in the south of England, where somebody said, but I'm a dinner lady and every every child in school comes comes past me. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. If one of them, yeah. you know, we lose the whole catering team. Yeah, somebody was saying about supply staff as well. Um, yeah, actually, they're transmitters from within uh, and across schools. Uh, I do get the bit that you're more likely, or you know, you're as likely to, to, to catch this from another member of staff as you are of a student. I, yeah. I do get that, and and it's fair. I, I don't think the exaggeration that you are more likely to catch it from a member of staff during coffee time than you are for new students, especially the older students get. 
but I just think there's, you know, there's there's much less talk about the adults in school and adults at home than there is about student to student or in primary child to child contact. I, I think for me the issue goes back to that point before about um, whether or not all the actions at this moment in time have been set up. It's as if what's what's happened is with the guidance gets to a position which enables stuff to sort of happen and and, and actually there's an action there for ha if there is an outbreak as to what can happen i go back to the fact that I, I still feel as though more could be done to protect the staff um and whether or not that's you know with with visors or with masks or whatever um which then because I'm, my worry is that we we're, we're going into this and if I think people people's guard will fall over a little bit of time, a few days, a few weeks will go. Yeah. But actually, the, the virus is still circulating. I think that there is then a risk that the 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 measures that are being used now are probably adequate for now, but actually may not be able to cope with a, a possible increase in the uh, prevalence of the of the of the virus. Mm. And that therefore means that there, there's, there has to be then a very, very quick retreat. And I think it may be the retreat goes back beyond where we are now. And that will yeah. pose the question, why didn't we do this in the first place? Yeah. You know, well, uh, have you noticed in, in Greater Manchester, two, two of the uh, areas that have been that on Wednesday will have less uh, in terms of lockdown roles, have actually both got spikes in the number yes. of cases. And, and in some cases, like a fifty percent increase. So it's, you know, how can how can you possibly manage when week by week? It's so, the time. so for those schools in that area, they're now under the impression on Wednesday they won't have to have masks in in school. But within ten days, they may be in a position where suddenly they've got to have masks. Yes, and yes. Have those got to be provided by the school. Are they? provided by by parents the most you must have to have a, a pack of masks ready for any student well, who doesn't bring it yeah the government was it true that the government have decided that they're going to give every school 10 COVID tests Test. yeah 10 testing kits which i mean it, that probably reflects the availability of covid tests yeah. around the country and actually the last test i had um which was part of the ons um program I think it was four days before I got the, re the re a response to it. Yeah. Wow. Um, so it does feel to me as if at that point, you know, I wasn't self isolating or anything, you know, but actually this is meant to come back much quicker than that. Um, yeah. so, you know. Well, I mean, for it to work, absolutely work, it needs, it needs to be under 24 hours return and, and it needs to be very, accurate test and trace that goes with it because if you get a positive result immediately you should have to say right when the last 10 days these are the close contacts yes. and they should be well, I mean from what I understand it's less than 50% of the contacts are being reached anyway yeah I, yeah it, uh, it doesn't look good does it for a, no, a, world, no. a world beating test and trace which I think that that, that, that that that's such a you know in a way where we've gone with all of this is polarization of it. It would be much easier for the prime minister just to say, you know, to be honest, we, we need to develop a, a much better yeah. system than we've got now. Not this expectation as to the point that they were going to be world beating, you know, which is an easy you know an easy um, slight. It's a, it's it's an easy attack, isn't it, for opposition? Yeah. Well, why not just say we're going to do our best? Yes, yeah, I know. We're going to do our best, but actually, we might not succeed. Got, and 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 we, you know, we we realise we've got a way to go. You know, it, yeah. you know, but it's that, it tends to be that sort of macho. We, we're in chat, you know. Yeah, it's the superlative. We will we will be better yeah. than anyone. And yeah. we'll be the app we were going to have in June. I know, I know. And that was the cause. And, and in a way, this this all the this will feed into this sort of lack of confidence that there is. But actually this is going to all work and I, 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 I'm like you Stan, I do really desperately want this to work you know with two well certainly three three grandchildren now all of whom are going to be out there tomorrow or this week and with um, what 
four members of the family as primary teachers, you know, I desperately want this to work. And one of whom is very vulnerable, you know, I, uh, it's got to work, you know, um, but I don't have the level of confidence that I think I should have about this, regardless of what this is a new thing and all this. I just think there's been too, too many, uh, too, too often, you know, um, what has been said will happen has not happened. And that's what worries me greatly here now. I think um, a local had to me, uh, I, think, I think it was on Twitter he put it, that obviously the, the, the way to plan now is to look at what the government intend to do and plan for the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> and that would, have been, that would have been correct last week. Well, that sums up a U-turn culture, doesn't it? Um, yeah, anyway. I mean, that's the other thing, that great, great political... Um, sort of um, scores are, are done on the fact that this is a U-turn, whereas it didn't need to be a U-turn. No, it, it needed to be a change of direction because what we've been trying hasn't worked as yes. well as we'd have yes. liked it to. Yeah. But there, there, there's, there's, there is a culture, though, isn't there, around at the moment that we don't admit to any mistakes. Well, oh. ride. We carry on riding until actually we hit the wall and then we have to turn around very quickly. Um, yeah, I think... I think the other thing that's happening, probably more quietly, but is a bit more worrying to me, is that, that people who are clearly not doing the greatest of jobs are keeping their jobs, but civil servants below that yeah. level yeah. are moving on. That, that's to me, is a, is a bit of a worry. I, I might be getting on to that next week because next week we've got uh, Henry Morrison, the uh, CEO of the Northern Powerhouse Partnership. Can you believe it? <laughs> um, joining Frank and Stan Chat. Uh, so he's joining us on Friday. And then the following Friday, we have got Graham Newell and Tom Trower coming back talking about um, the use of technology uh, in helping teachers to improve teaching. But you and me, Stan, tomorrow, we've got another Zoom meeting, haven't we? Yeah, to celebrate 25 years of meeting, um, of meeting together, but also meeting um, with three other head teachers, um, with the mentor um, Miriam Rosen, who became the chief inspector, um, and uh, we're going to have a Zoom call tomorrow tomorrow evening, uh, just to sort of chew the fat and yeah, talk through the old stories. Times. Yeah, it's been great time. We've, we've told the story so many times, but they still make us laugh. Yeah, I, I, I'm just smiling now at the inspection where you and I were told off for laughing. <laughs> Official <laughs> reprimand for laughing in the staff room. Was that after Was that after one of the inspectors got hit with blancmange in the... Uh, yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> and, and another, and another um, character asked us all in our first names, asked... <laughs> Hi Stan, I had Frank, how's Ted doing? <laughs> and also when um, one of the one of our, our crew noticed that child sharpening the pencil on the teacher's <laughs> desk with the electric pencil sharpener, only to find it up his backside the car <laughs> All during his action. Anyway, so we've got to have a chat tomorrow night with Miriam and uh, some other colleagues. I'm really looking forward to it. So, uh, thank you, Stan. Uh, thank you, Frank. Out this week, I'm sure it will. Um, and uh, we'll be back next weekend, um, and we'll be re have a, a recording of the the chat we're having with Henry Morrison. So, uh, thank you all for watching, and we'll see you all soon.